Hey, hello, my name is Julie Jo. Welcome to my channel. If you're new here, please hit that subscribe button. There's a lot coming your way. If you're not new, welcome back. I love you. I'm happy that you're here. This is going to be an exciting video, but before we do anything, don't forget to go and follow my TikTok. We just hit 37,000 awesome people for the anti MLM community over there. I just recently started an Instagram, so if you want to follow my Instagram, both of my TikTok and Instagram names are right here, walkin underscore on underscore Lexapro. Feel free to go follow those. And then of course, subscribe here. If you do watch my video, feel free to post it on Instagram, tag me in it. I would love to reshare it on my story. Today I have a very special video for us I will be commenting on. I was sent this by someone who was a part of Young Living at one point, and you cannot get this video unless you are sent the link, so that's really exciting. This video is horrifying to watch for many reasons, and trust me, I have a lot to say about it, but I also want to hear what you have to say about it, so feel free to comment below. If you don't know anything about Young Living, just know it's a multi-level marketing company that sells oils with a very, very dark past. If you want me to do an entire video over the past of Young Living and their founder, I would be more than happy to, but I do cover that on my TikTok. If you want to see everyday stuff from me, go to TikTok. That is a great place to see it, and my Instagram as well. Both great places. I think it is time that we get started on this video. I did want to show you something before we continued. If you haven't seen my Dwight candle, Saint Dwight is right there. Uh, he always watches over us during these videos. But uh, let's take a look. I know... I know. Absolutely incredible. Um, I got all of this off Etsy. Well, I got the notebook off Etsy and then I got all the stickers off Etsy. If you want to know the store I got them off on Etsy, I will put them below. The small shop. Since we do anti-MLM content here, I love featuring small shops in anything that I do, but I mostly do that on TikTok. So I want to start doing that on YouTube. Feel free to shoot me an email about your small business and I would love to feature you in one of my YouTube videos. But yes, the small business will be below. Thank you so much, that was so nice. Um, I'm so excited to be here and get to get to talk to you guys. I am hiding too. I just sent my kids um, to a Starbucks drive through because they are being hellions today. Um, yeah, so we, we did, we got to, um, we qualified for that full cruise and then we both literally popped out children um, at the same time, the irony, but that's okay. That's better than a cruise. Um, at least that's what I tell myself when I'm saying it really is. And, uh, thank God that actually did happen. Cause that's when our team hit diamonds that same weekend. And, um, truly, I don't think I could have hit diamond without the Wi-Fi, and it all worked out. So it was totally fine. Um, I got started in Young Living in October of 2014. So almost six years, which is crazy. Um, I started because my daughter has a lung disease called cystic fibrosis and um, was super, super sick with a bunch of infections the first eight months of her life. And we had tried a bunch of essential oils. They thought they were weird and they smelled like potpourri and I didn't get it. And then somebody was like, no, you need to try something called Thieves. And um, I ignored it. I kept pushing it out of my mind. And then one day I was randomly scrolling Instagram and some girl that did my makeup for my wedding got a sample of an oil called Thieves from some girl named Jill, which you guys I'm sure all know is Jill on call. So we actually didn't know each other. Everybody thinks that we're like sisters. We did not have a relationship prior to this. She found me on Instagram. And um, it was just one of those God things that he was like, you need this. And I didn't understand it. I couldn't afford it. And so I did what every, uh, you know, mom would do and called my dad and was like, dad, listen, because my, something that you guys should know is that we are an active duty, or we were active duty military family. I quit my job to take care of my daughter. And the day that I signed up for Young Living, I literally had $80 in my bank account. But Charlie, my daughter was so physically sick um, that I couldn't even go to a grocery store because of all her treatments. And something inside me just knew that I needed thieves. And so my parents, like we have the best parents, and they're like, yes, whatever you need. So I bought a starter kit, a bottle of Raven, and a bottle of thieves household cleaner. And um, long story short, within two weeks, I knew that I would never, ever not have thieves in my life. Everything she was culturing in her lungs, all that bacteria was completely killed in two weeks by thieves, just diffusing 
um, which was amazing. The only thing is, again, <laughs> I'm a mill. Holy shit. I don't know if y'all just heard that, but she said that everything that was in her lungs, that she was culturing, was killed by thieves. Now, we all know that thieves doesn't do that, but, but I want to go ahead and read the policy and procedures, and I'll show it right here. 5.3.1 product claims and Young Living's policy and procedures. To ensure compliance with federal and state laws and regulations, members are prohibited from making inaccurate and impermissible claims about any Young Living products. You must not make any claim that Young Living products are intended for use in the diagnosis, cure, mitigation, treatment, or prevention of disease, including in a personal testimony. You must also avoid making any statements and claims that are false or misleading concerning Young Living products absolutely irresponsible for people to make those kind of claims because one it is awful that her daughter has cystic fibrosis horrible that is a horrible genetic disease and it and it's not something that's curable either it's something that her sweet little daughter is going to have the rest of her life and that is so sad but to say that thieves <laughs> and killed it is just inaccurate, completely inaccurate. To use her daughter like that, it's awful. I'm sorry if you can hear my dog whining. She's, she's sad too. I know, baby. I know. I know, baby. I know, Luna. It's okay. And then you can come see mom. Are you sad that she's using her daughter that way? God, I'm feeling God. <laughs> Jesus. Hi, Luna. Anyway. Oh, I love you. She's my youngest. I have three. Were you crying because you didn't like what the mother was doing? Because she lied to a bunch of people? We hate when people lie to a bunch of people about MLM products, right? Say, ew. Say, ew, you know. I love you. All right, I got to continue, you know. I love you. Go down on the couch. I'll be there soon. Sorry, not sorry. <laughs> I know. Or just sit by me. Whatever you want to do. I'll tell your wife um, with the deployed husband on a budget and so I did what every mom would do and I just went to that mama mode where you literally will do anything you can for your child I don't mean to keep stopping it but I had some technical issues before so I wanted to mention I forgot to mention that like that was her vulnerability I would say probably 99% of people who join MLMs and of course that's just my opinion join because they have a vulnerability that's been tapped into by someone who's in the MLM already trying to get them to join so they and this is what we were taught to do was you find what they need right what well, something that they're needing and then you show how the multi-level marketing company is going to help meet that need and that's kind of what they did here. I don't care how nice or sweet or kind someone sounds or looks. To use your child in that way or to say something like that and mislead a whole bunch of people is disgusting. Like, yeah, props not. Like, don't do that, okay? Yeah, props not. How about no? If that was from Austin Powers. How about no? Anyone? Okay. <laughs> I know. I know. That was a bit much, but what ifs. All right, let's keep going. And so I knew if I could just sell a couple kits a month, I could just cover the cost of thieves. There was no, I never in a million years that I would be a silver, let alone a diamond in this company. I didn't even really want essential oils. Truly. I just knew I wanted thieves. Like I just wanted to, whatever happened to her, I just wanted it to keep happening. Um, and that was my goal. Um, I didn't come into this with like a strategic plan. I didn't necessarily see the business opportunity until we got our first paycheck. So that first month I just started sharing on my, you know, Facebook. I'm like, literally, I think my first post was a picture of the starter kit on my stove. It was not aesthetically pleasing at all. And I was like, I don't know what these are, but like, I'm really excited about it. And, um, and so it just kind of exploded. And my first kit sale is now one of my platinum leaders, which is really fun. She started doing the business that first day with me. Um, and it's just been really, really great. And this last March, my husband went from active duty to reserves and we just moved our whole life to North Carolina for funsies. Like we're just here now hanging. 
Um, and it's been such a blessing. We would have removed the week that the whole world shut down. So we are so blessed to be here. We can't wait to actually explore our town, but grateful that we have um, a beautiful house to sit in because of Young Living um, and because of our team. So it's kind of one. Sorry, my eye is really messing with me. Two, that is right, sister. It is because of your team. Listen, if her entire team quit, she would have nothing. Absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing. So yes, that house is because of your team. Uh, is because of the recruitment, not because of the product sales. Pyramid scheme? Where? Everywhere. That's where. Kind of like my story, we're gunning for Crown Diamond, hopefully soon. Um, my legs have been set for Royal Crown for like three years just waiting, <laughs> waiting for that OGV. But um, we've, we're doing some really cool things. And I'd love to share that with you guys. Uh, if it's okay, like I screenshotted all of your questions. I thought I would just like scroll through because I feel so awkward talking about myself. Honestly, it makes me have anxiety. Okay, great. Okay, so somebody said, actually Lauren, hey Lauren, um, how did you find your business people to run alongside you? So something that I think that makes me kind of different in this company besides the fact that I had hot pink hair for like five years, um, is that I lead with the business. And I know that that makes some people really cringe. Um, and I, I totally get it. And I am 100% a product of the product. If you came to my house, you would be like, wow, for sure, girl. Um, but also, I firmly, firmly believe that you cannot bless somebody with your mouth shut. And that first chest check was a... <laughs> you just open yourself for a whole bunch of jokes, ma'am. <laughs> I want you to comment a way or many ways you can bless someone with your mouth shut. <laughs> I know a few ways, but one way is like, uh, just order me DoorDash, send it to my home. Now that's a blessing in of itself. Hand me a $20 bill. That's a blessing. You don't have to say a damn thing. Not one damn thing. Uh, another blessing. Um, I just keep thinking about food or like iced coffee, like buy me an iced coffee. <laughs> uh, take my dogs for a walk. You do not have to say a damn thing. You don't have to do a damn thing with your mouth. I, I'm sorry. I, she just, lots of jokes there. Lots of jokes there that I will not be sharing, but I would love to hear yours. How can you bless someone without opening your mouth? Comment below. I want to know was $180 and that paid for a car payment. And I think sometimes we get so caught up in like, oh, when I'm silver, I'll, I'll finally share about the income opportunity. Um, and uh, I just want to shake people and be like, you have no idea that people are literally sitting behind these Instagram cubes and like $180 would bless them. Like that would drastically change their life. We were on WIC. We were like, I had no money to throw at this. Like I have goosebumps just talking about it because I really like want you guys to know if you don't get anything else that I'm a normal, semi-normal human. And like, I did not have a following. I did not have a lot of money. I didn't have, I literally, I was just a mom with a sick kid staying up and like trying to do my best. Like there was not any special thing about me. Um, and I just want you guys to like really know that. And so for me, I've always been like, listen, like I'll go out to dinner with like my girlfriends. Right. And I'd be like, you guys, I just got a check from your living today. And it was like, $180 and all of them gasped. Like, I'll never forget that. They're like, wow, that's so great, Frank. Like, that is so awesome. How can I do that? And they've watched me and all of them are still on our team and now they're golds and platinums. And that is the coolest feeling. And like, what if I didn't go to lunch? And what if I just like, was like, you know what? That was $180. It's not worth sharing. Like their lives would not be where they are either. Um, so I think my biggest thing is just be bold with every, sorry, I talked so fast with every kit. I send out um, a business something, you know, and I don't know if I have, I literally, all of this was just a shipment. So please forgive my office. But like, I know um, Carol, we're all on Carol's team. She has those business brochures. This is not them. So just pretend, but they have the business opportunity. I send that with every kit sale where if I have like the game plan, 
little mini books, I'll send that, just something that shows the business opportunity. Whatever I have on hand, I'm kind of a hot mess. I don't like have a structured anything because I would never survive. But just something that shows the opportunity because you don't know what people are going through, especially right now. And I've heard the statistic that people are literally losing their houses and not able to pay their income. If they had $200 more a month, that they would be okay. And like you guys, like we have the ability to get anybody $200. Where? Where's the statistic? Because I tried to look it up, couldn't find it. Couldn't find it. You know, there's not one. Prove it. Show us. Don't just pull stuff out of your butthole. Like, say and show the statistic. Pfft. Like, what the frick is wrong with people these days? Just show the truth. Don't just say random things and say it's true. Come on now. And she says, we have the ability, well, she says more. This company is set up to help people succeed, so. Like that, that, like, we have, she says we have the ability to get anybody $200. This company is set up to help somebody, to help people succeed. No, it's not. No, it's not. Let's look at the income disclosure statement, shall we? I really don't want to, but we need to. I just want to look at the income disclosure statement for a moment because um, she's a flat out liar. Caught her in a few lies already, but this one is ridiculous. So, everyone in Young Living who's a distributor is like, but everyone's included, even the people who are customers. Yeah, uh, this is embarrassing for you because let's look at star. First, associate, that's where you start. Uh, that's 88.1% of the company that makes $3 a year. Okay, cool. We'll let that slide, your $3 a year. Okay, uh-huh. Okay. We'll go with star since they get so butthurt. Now we are at over 96% of the company if we include star and they make $248 a year. That doesn't include any expenses whatsoever, including their initial purchase, which is a likely close to that amount or at least half that amount. That's not great. What's left is less than 4%. So yikes. This is not a good opportunity for anyone ever, but especially if people want to make $200 more. Here is what the FTC says. They say that 99.6% .6 of people won't make money and likely lose money. They say it's even worse than gambling, and it's even worse than a non-product pyramid scheme. Wow. Wow. How many times can I say that? as many times as I've said it, because after that, it's probably annoying. But it's just absolutely ridiculous for people to say this, especially when you're a diamond. And she's going to continue to talk about how many people have joined the business with her and how many people have been successful. What about the people that haven't? What about the people that have joined the business with you and quit? Because I bet that's a shit ton of people. Mm -hmm. Because your income disclosure statement says so. Also, let's remember that the income disclosure statement is the absolute best numbers that the company can give. It is their absolute best. The absolute best numbers that they can possibly give. Yeah, embarrassing. I know. Especially for Young Living. They already are embarrassing enough, but then you include their income disclosure statement. That's awful. All right. I'll talk to you in a few minutes after we get into some intense parts. You won't see me for a few minutes because I'll be watching this. Uh, it's about to get real weird. Um... Just be bold. <laughs> I just don't have a problem with that. I've never had a problem. And I just leave with the business. I know the products are life changing, but so is the business opportunity. Frankie, will you share with everyone what your um, color personality is? For sure. I am a blue, <laughs> blue, yellow, 0% green human. Um, I'm an Enneagram. I, you know, I don't really know. It's sometimes I'm a three, sometimes I'm a seven. I think I'm a seven. And yeah, I'm not organized, so. I think I really that, that just gives people good context to know, like, yeah. I mean, our team is such a variety that, like, anyone, no matter how they're wired, like you just said, you're not super organized. Like, sometimes I think people think, like, I need to have, like, everything structured out and have, like, this whole system in place, and it's like, yes, I think it's good to hear that diamond leaders don't always have this, like, 
you know, cut and dry and assembly line way to do things. It's just like you show up and that's the most important thing. For sure. Um, and I think it's also important for you guys to know too, that like, I don't have an assistant. I don't, I don't like, um, I do have a nanny. That is something my daughter, um, obviously cannot attend like a public school. She could, there's lots of that. So we have a nanny that comes and she strictly like will homeschool my kids. Like her and I both do it together, have her for four days a week for four hours. And that's when I crush all my work time. I, it, I've been a diamond for three years. I just two months ago hired somebody to do our graphics for the end of the month. Cause my husband was like, why are you stressing? Like pay somebody $40 to create your team graphics. And so I literally just started doing that, but I am not one of those people. Like I just, I think I can just do it. I don't know. I just show up. That's, that's so accurate. Like nothing has to be perfect. I'd rather just get it done and move on with my day. Um, and I think it's a good example too, because I'm a mom, like I get it. I have a special needs child and I just don't want anybody to think, Oh, I can't be a diamond. Cause like the thought of hiring all of these people like stresses me out. Cause that used to stress me out. I'm like that just does not seem no, nope, no shade. Listen, we all do it so differently, but yeah, I'm like one of those people. Okay. Um, another question I think I'd love to answer is if you started brand new today, would you do anything differently? And I not necessarily have a system for follow-up. But my gosh, I wish I would just like reach out to people that first year I enrolled like a hundred people and I reached out to like zero of them because I thought in my head, they have to be just as enthusiastic as I am about essential oils. And that is not true. That is not the case. And then my other limiting belief was like, oh, if I'm reaching out to them, then I'm being salesy and I don't want them to think that. Um, so something that I did and I did this, oh my gosh, I think it was last January. Um, I was talking to Jordan Sharant. And um, we did a mini diamond bound event. I spoke at something she did. I don't remember where it was, but she said something that really stuck out to me. And it was this book. And she said, if you get a pocket reference in every single one of your members' hands, then they literally have the oil Bible and there's no reason that they would not be on essential rewards. And I'm not kidding y'all. I literally went home and I bulk ordered so many of these things and sent them to every single person I ever enrolled. And I was like, you know what, if anything, <laughs> like at least I know on my conscience, I did everything I could. I handed them this book because this was gifted to me when our daughter, when we started with Young Living, I could not afford this. And I specifically remember after I got the call from the doctor that Charlie's pseudomonas cleared from her lungs, you know, as a mom, you're like, okay, I know that it was thieves, but I wanted that proof. And so when you look, I don't know if it's in this specific version, but the version I have, when you look up thieves, it specifically talks about bacteria as it kills and it said pseudomonas. And I'm like, what the heck, you know? So this is something that changed my life. And I just feel like I don't give $25 off a kit. It's just not my thing. Um, I'd rather pay overnight shipping for somebody, but I don't devalue the kit. I'd rather invest in, truly, I really do invest that $50 back in my members, I, I like to think. Um, and I give this to everybody. So if this is something that you can maybe afford to do, Oh, this has like changed my life and, and sending that out. Let me just tell you guys, our ER percentage skyrocketed and um, people started reordering again. They have parents that are going through like serious health issues or kids or whatever. And they open that book and they're like, dang, I had no idea that essential oils could do what they do. So that's something that would be different. What she's saying is if you get this book and you send it out with each person that orders from you, you're likely going to get them to continue to order from you, which means you'll continue to get more business. So she's saying that you should get this book. She ordered them in bulk and just sends them out with each person that purchased from her. The book is $40 from Amazon. That's absolutely ridiculous. For each person that orders from you, 40 bucks? That is going to add up so quickly. That doesn't include anything you, like think, think monthly. If you purchase oils monthly, you have an ER order. I think it's might be like 50 bucks a month. I'm trying to remember how Young Living worked with that. I don't know. So you already spend at least 50 bucks a month on oils, plus at least 50 bucks a month on this book, one book to send to one person if only one person orders. If four people order, that's $200 a month. So now you're spending $200 a month on this one book to send out to four different people. You're spending more on this book than you are on oils? What? This is absolutely ridiculous. People will not profit this way. There's no way. 
she will because she's in the 0.1% of the company. Right there. Right there on the income disclosure statement. Diamond, 0.1% of the company. The average income is $352,000 a year. Yeah, she'll profit from it. She's fine with it. But what about the other people who are mostly at star or senior star? It's so frustrating to watch, to listen to these people talk. It's frustrating because she really is pushing them to buy this. And she actually does it later on. We'll see. She's really pushing them to buy this book for each person that buys from them. But that's an additional $50 that they have to pay. And this is just how people don't profit and how people lose money. They're never going to profit. Follow up. You are not a burden. They came to you. You did not hold a gun to anybody's head to buy a starter kit. At least I hope not. And so they came to you and they wanted something. So I think going back, I would be like, okay, why are you wanting essential oils? Um, and something I do now, I'm like, okay, I'll go tag you in all these posts. And so you can kind of see like, oh, your, your daughter has eczema. Well, here's some really great posts to help you. And then kind of keep a journal if I could. I don't know if that's my personality, but you know, some kind of like spreadsheet of some sort. I don't know if I was feeling squirrely, but just kind of remember why people got into oils. That way I can kind of follow up and not feel as salesy because they came to you for a reason. And it, I want to be a good steward to people. I really want to be a servant leader. Um, so that's something I would do differently. So everyone wants to be a servant leader. Sorry, I keep stopping it, but she just says so much bullshit. Like everyone wants to be a servant leader. I'm sure that's on this, right? Um, so what she's saying is like, so if you don't tag people, First off, if you don't send this book to them, you're not a servant leader. Second, if you don't tag people in like a post about it curing something or something they struggle with that it cures or that it could potentially help, you're not being a servant leader. No, that's called product claims and you're not supposed to do that. Jeez Louise, get it together. Get it together, Young Living. Quit it. Imagine this. She's saying all this to people in Young Living. And she thinks the only people that are going to see this are the people on it right now or the people that are part of her team. That's it. She didn't think other people are going to see it and call her out on her bullshit. Yeah, no, we're here and we're calling you out. This is not okay. I smell a lot of bullshit. A t <gasps> Sorry, I'm allergic to her bullshit. Um, okay. You see, there's so many questions. I just want to make sure that I... Oh, sorry. I thought somebody was saying something. Um, somebody said... I don't know. Hey, hang on. Sarah, will you mute yourself real quick? Okay. So there was a question about like a mentorship. Like what do you do when you have new members? And something I did when I went from platinum to diamond, that was actually my easiest transition for whatever reason. I think my hardest was gold. Somebody asked like what the hardest rank was. And I think for sure it's like uh, gold to platinum almost because you have that high OGV or maybe it was platinum to diamond. But anyway, you're doing like so much OGV and you feel kind of like overwhelmed by that. Like it's such a not, oh, I don't know how to explain this very well. I'm not great with words guys, but I just felt. Uh, yeah, I can tell because you keep saying your oils cure stuff. You're also not great with facts. So, like, you know, I really wanted to be diamond to have that support because you're doing such a big volume of sales. Um, and it's a big jump, truly. But I really, it didn't take me long to get to platinum to diamond because um, in that transitional period, I was super pregnant, like Kelly was saying. And um, I was like, I have to work smarter, not harder. And I had to like reevaluate what that looks like. And although I'm not green, I came up with this really cool thing that you guys could always like get together, like the leaders and put together. And I, I don't know what exactly what this looked like, but a brief overview is we called it like star factory. And so we took people that were stars and senior stars and we bunched them together. That's my favorite thing to do. Um, so we just bunched everybody together and basically poured into them. So we gave them like weekly tasks and we're like, okay, we're going to show up all week with you and we're going to go over all these things and like, here's some business basics. Here's a good video to watch and all of these things. It wasn't social media based. It was more business based. And I remember we grew so fast and I think I gave incentives. This was so long ago. I wish I kept all of this. Um, but first off, this sounds like indoctrination and groupism to me, like where it's going. 
sounds a lot like indoctrination and groupism. So groupism is like the tendency to think like a group, and it's to form to a cult-like pattern at the expense of individualism. You don't think individually anymore. It's getting a little bit icky. Here's some more about it. Um, but I think I gave out like maybe diamond planners to people who went from like senior star to executive or like some sort of incentive of what I had on hand. Um, and, and we got to diamond that way. Like truly, like I just poured into people. It overwhelms my personality to help people individually. So for me as a leader, that's kind of my trick is to like bunch people together. Hopefully they'll link arms and that takes the pressure off of me because the first two years of my business, I did not do that. I felt like I had to answer my phone all the time, anytime I got a message and I burnt myself out so many times. Um, so that was a big lesson for me. And then ironically, I was on a call with some of my gold leaders a couple of months ago and they're like, Frank, I call myself Frank, sorry. They're like, we used to do all these really cool hustle groups. Like, why did you stop doing that? And that was like such a gut punch as a leader. I'm like, I can't even give you a great answer. I have no idea. I think I just got really comfortable being diamond. And so we're now in this transitional thing where we're taking, we're using the silver bound bonus to our advantage and we are grouping people. And so I'm running with my gold leaders and we're having all of these new builders that are star or senior star. We can't be above senior star. Um, and we are pocketing them into these like pod groups and we're doing these like weekly calls with them. We're doing weekly tasks and daily tasks. So Monday through Friday, they have a social media based task they have to do. And then they have a um, like business of like, go watch Monique McLean's comp plan video. And um, then a weekly task. So right now that kind of looks like you have to get at least three people on a Zoom call for a one-on-one. And basically we're teaching them the tools they need for 30 days for them to grow. Because after 30 days, like they need to take off. And sometimes it sounds harsh, but um, Monique McLean and I had a really good conversation about this last summer. And she literally said, Frank, the people that are gonna take off are gonna take off, you do not need to handle. Like they're gonna figure it out anyway. Ugh, and I was like, you are so right. Although that hurts my soul because I want to have fun with everybody and I really want to feel like I can do all the things. But I like, also we run a very big team and that is not, I can't do that every day. I can't, I can't show up and like handhold anymore like I used to. And so at the end of the 30 days, they're either going to sink or swim. And I feel like that's kind of harsh to say, but it's the reality of it. And the people that swim are going to be platinums one day and diamonds and the other people are just going to have to figure it out but i think my main thing in saying that to you okay this is frustrating to hear because something that people push all the time in mlms is mentorship you're going to get a mentor and they're going to help you through everything they're going to help you build your business you're just going to do what they do that and that's what you're going to do but what she's saying is after 30 days of this you're on your own i'm out you either sink or you swim that's it what so you're gonna do groupism so you're gonna start by indoctrinating them for 30 days straight every single day and then you're gonna drop them are you just not gonna text them back if they have questions what are you gonna do what the heck I don't know tell me what you think about that what do you think about that comment below what you think about that it, it's just odd to me. They just don't care about them necessarily. For 30 days, they're going to give it their all, indoctrinate them in Young Living, and then drop them. But they promise this mentorship in this community. But you only get it for 30 days. Interesting. Yeah, seriously, comment below. I want to hear what you think. You. It's fine to people if you do do something like this, like voice message them, invite them. We only, each leader invited five people. Um, it's not a big group. It's like something that we can pour into them. We can mark a poll of them. We can text them and it's not overwhelming, but make sure that they're people that are positive and that want this and that know why they're doing this. So in Grow, um, we have this exercise that we put in there. Yeah, so make sure that they give in to toxic positivity and don't question anything. That's what she said. She said it in a different way, but she's saying make sure they are positive all the time. Make sure they're positive, toxic positivity consistently, and make sure they believe in this. They don't question anything. That's what she means. That's what she means. Gross.
in there called the seven layers of why. Um, and I make every new builder do that. I feel like it's so important. That way you know why they're doing this. Um, make them do 30, 60, 90 day goals. Make sure they're in it, I guess, because you don't want to waste your time. And, um, you know, I don't know if that makes sense. I hope that's not really harsh, but it's just something I'm kind of finding out as I go along. Like, I, sometimes I want this so badly more than they want it. Like, I can see the potential in them, but realistically, if somebody doesn't want it, there's only so much you can do, and I'd rather get new blood going to help those people get to their goals. So that, that does make sense. And I, um, we actually, for those who weren't on our team call last night, we are uh, going to be rolling out something that sounds very similar to what you were suggesting, Frankie. So it's encouraging to hear that you guys have had like good success with that. Um, and we kind of mentioned how like the rise booklet that Young Living just put out, which is awesome is it's great, but it's for 90 days and we want to focus on a shorter duration of time. So it's cool to hear you say, um, I, I agree. I think a lot of people, um, I, I think a lot of people on our team are wired that same way where it's like, we want to see everyone succeed, but the realization is like, not everyone actually wants to succeed themselves or they're not ever going to take this business as seriously as you might. And that's okay. Like it's totally fine. Um, but we all need to like use our time wisely and be pouring into the people that actually want to grow this and see it turn into something really incredible. So it's encouraging to hear that you guys have had like good success with that. Yeah, it's been great. I agree on the 90 day thing. I think it's just too long. Um, I saw the book. I love the concept of that for sure. But for us, this is perfect. Um, she's pretty much saying like, so if they don't succeed, it's their fault. If they don't succeed, they didn't put in the work. They didn't do the stuff. They didn't do what they were told to do. It's their fault. They're not running. They're not trying hard enough. They're not doing this. They're not doing that. Well, that's not correct. They could be doing everything you told them to do and just not succeeding because 99.6% of people don't make money. What? Like, it's so awful how people in multi-level marketing companies, and especially in Young Living, I guess, like what we're seeing right now, treat people who don't succeed. The business model is not made for the majority of people to succeed. It's made for the one to 2% to succeed. That's it. That's what it's made for. They're explaining this to them. They want them to think like, if they don't succeed, it's their fault. It's their fault. It's their fault. It can't be Young Living's fault. It could never be Young Living's fault. Um, yeah, it can be. And it is. It is. It's not made for people to succeed. What ifs? All right. All right. Let's keep going. I think another thing, too, is just, like, show them the resource, even if it doesn't look like a hustle group. Um, I kind of put together like this email that I, I message out everybody that is like a builder or we have like it in our pinned post or something. And it shows them literally everything from like um, how to stack somebody. Like here's this, the strategic placement scripts that you would email resolutions. And here's the groups. Like here's where you go to find the classes. So that way they have a hub of like all the information. That way you don't feel like if you're cooking dinner and you're watching a movie with your family, like you I don't know. It's all there. And I think that's something that I did not do. I just kept giving them and giving them and not teaching people to fish. And then they became reliant on me. And that is a lot of pressure as a human. And now as a diamond, like it's just not sustainable. So um, I think that's an important lesson as all of you guys grow in this business to just have those things easily accessible. So it's, um, I'm just very big on like family time and you know, listen, like I worked really hard for those first three years and sacrificed so much. And I, I would do it all over again. I would do it again and again and again to have my husband home and to have this house. Like I always knew this would happen. But now like I worked really hard and I want to enjoy this too. Like my kids are only young ones and um, I'm not going to get these days back with my husband. I don't know what he's going to do now that he's not in the military, but um, just like wanting to enjoy this. So you can have it all. You just have to find that balance if there is such a thing. Um, but just working smarter, not harder, I guess, is like. What she's saying without saying it is, she's in the 0.1%, so now she just doesn't really have to work like her downline has to work. She worked really hard for three years, and now she's done working like that. It's so sad, because 
the truth is, the majority of people aren't going to get where she is, but they're going to try really hard, and they're going to miss out on a lot of time with their family like she did. But they're not going to get where she is. They're going to think it's going to cure their children. They're going to think it's going to cure stuff too, which it just doesn't. Stop saying your spicy water cures anything. Your spicy water does not cure anything. The thing here. Um, somebody said or asked the favorite things to include in a welcome kit. I used to give away everything like beeswax and I knew good and well those people were not going to open the beeswax palettes that I sent them. So I stopped like giving away everything. Oh my gosh, I probably still have them somewhere. But truly now I'd rather invest in this. Um, and I do this differently. Sometimes I'll send this right away with the welcome kit or sometimes I'll wait 30 days and then I can check in with them and send this out. So definitely this book, but honestly, I just send two rollers and this and an email with like some Amazon links to like roller balls and glass droppers. And like, I literally call it the fun things that you need that are like, that I use all the time in my favorite like stores on Etsy because my demographic wants like the hot pink roller balls. And I feel like if they go invest in those things, like they're going to use them and buy more oil. So instead of me giving away everything, I'd rather give this book, which is Annie Hauser's, um, I think this is brilliant. I love her and I love that she gave me a stack of them. I actually packed her car for her at her Modern and Oil event and she gave me a bunch of them. So I'm set, but I think they're, they might be sold out right now. Bless her. So I love this and literally just two roller bottles and a handwritten note. I'm very big into handwritten notes. Think that's important and then yeah I'll either send this right away or 30 days just depends it kind of depends on the person so many extra expenses so many oh yikes that makes sense will you also touch on your happy mail for your team since you're talking about what you send out for sure you guys can oh I don't have it yet dang it okay so yes I love happy mail i'm the queen of this um i know i don't really i'm not necessarily a grow mentor anymore but if you go into grow you can search my name and i've done like a ton of posts on happy mail too um okay don't tell anybody this is between us but i just ordered the freaking coolest things for silvers we have a ton of new silvers now and i really wanted to find a way to like give back so i bought these um dragonfly and spruce my sweet friend um, makes engravable roller bottles and she put my new logo like in gold. I can't even guys, they're not here yet or I would totally show you, but I have this blend that has like my team loves. They're like super into it and it's called boss babe. And I created it like three years ago and it has basically it's like envision, believe tangerine, um, transformation, just a bunch of, it smells like Beyonce. Like I just imagine that Beyonce would smell. Beyonce does not smell like your spicy water. No, she's queen. She does not smell like your spicy ass water. That offended me. Like, no, she doesn't. Get out of here. Again, more lies. Mm, you know she doesn't smell like your spicy water. Quit. Oh. Ooh. By the way, the spicy water is not drinkable. Do not drink the spicy water. Okay, heads up, don't drink it. It's not that kind of spicy water, okay? You know, and so I'm gonna gift it to them in our new Holy Roller things. Um, so just finding ways to celebrate people, the top um, contributors in our group every month, they send a, a Starbucks gift card, like a $5 gift card. Every week, every week, um, I send five random people that I just am scrolling by on my team on Instagram. I'll like, I'll just send them a letter. It's like, hey, that Instagram post that you did about the raindrop kit was so great. You're killing it. Here's some confetti. They get so mad, but like they should expect it by now. And then I just thought like these thieves at all can tell. I don't know if you can tell. Um, holographic things from Flare and Festive. So maybe I'll send like a decal, a sticker, whatever I have. I buy random things at 3 a.m. on Etsy all the time. And so I just use what I have. And I just send out random things. But I love to celebrate rain flips. Um, and just keep the morale going. I just, I don't know. I just think it's so important to make people feel seen and appreciated. Um, I love when people send me gifts in the mail. That's my love language. And so I always like want to give, give to people. And um, I guess it just looks differently no matter, 
every month. I don't have like, again, a system. I wish I did, but that is my new system, the rank, those rank rollers for silvers. Um, executives, I send a Starbucks gift card. Senior star, I just write a handwritten note. Um, but I literally send every new ranking person. So my hands are gonna hurt tomorrow when all of my stuff gets here. But I think it's just such a blessing um, to even be able to send out, you know, things. So just make sure you celebrate people. That really wasn't a great answer for that, I feel like. No, no, I think that's really great. And I think I think one thing that you're touching on too is like, um, it doesn't, it doesn't have to look a certain way or even cost a certain amount of money. Like, I think sometimes people get hung up on like, well, like I don't have enough in my budget to really like pour into like the people I've enrolled or, um, to celebrate people. And it's like something as simple as a handwritten note, or even like you said, how you just send your new people some links. Like it doesn't have to cost anything to show attention and care and support and love. Um, so I think that's really important. It's just so funny that you say that because I had, um, I don't know if any of you guys know who Celeste Peterman is, but she is like a freaking force to be messed with. And she is somebody that watched me um, for years do this business. And the day that I hit Diamond, she came over and wanted to, that's when she started to do the business actually. She was there. We had like $25,000 that we needed in one day. And she's like, what are you doing? Like, what is this sorcery? And she actually is somebody that had a big job. She was making over $100,000 a year, very successful, very comfortable. And um, long story short, wanted more for her life, just was not happy doing this and, and doing whatever she was. I don't even know what her job was. It was so bizarre. So anyway, she just hit platinum last month. And um, I had her over to our house. And literally, I didn't even get her a gift. I had some like flowers and like um, balloons and a bottle of nice champagne or whatever. But I just like served her all weekend. Like I took her on a hike and I made her and like we had a couple of our team members. I know like I know COVID's happening. It was less than 10. We all washed our hands. Don't call anybody. And um, we, I made soup and like homemade bread. And like, we just talked and had like fellowship. And she literally said to me when she was leaving, she said, Frankie, that was seriously better than any gift. Like you just paying attention to me all weekend and like serving me and giving me your time was everything I could have asked for. And I don't know, it just was like one of those gut punches that like, I feel like all the time, like a lot of people in this business that I have to give and give and give. And truly people just want your time. Like they just want to feel seen and heard. Um, so I don't know why I want to share that, but I just thought that was very interesting. That was a huge rank and literally I just made her sausage soup and homemade bread and she was so happy. <laughs> I'm fine with that. I'd eat your sausage soup. It was really, I mean, I'm not going to lie. Pretty good cook. Pretty good cook. How much time do we have? Um, as much or as little as you want. I know you, um, you have a cutoff at one but if you want to end before that that's fine too so I just thought I had like there's one more or if anybody has a question for me too I'm not even checking the chat um does anybody have any questions for me I think I think most of the people that are on this call right now posted questions on the thread in our group but if anyone does have any that have come up you know feel free to pop them in the chat room hey I'm in a car. Hold on. Let me speak up myself. Okay. I do have a question. You just moved, right? Yeah. So how are you going to like, kind of like make yourself, I don't know, not available, but like, how do you, how do you like, how are you going to uh, integrate yourself into the new place where you are? So like to get yourself known where you are. Love that you asked me this because this is what gets me super fired up. This is like my question. So um, everybody's always like, how do you do this? You move every couple years because we were military. So we started our business in Georgia, moved to Florida, had a huge team there. And now we're, we moved to Clayton. And guys, I've had this game plan in my head since I told myself we're moving to North Carolina. And now, of course, life is weird, but it's going to be great in a couple weeks. So basically my tactic has always been, I freaking get involved. I am not one of those people that sits in front of a computer and tells my team that they need to go host things and they need to network. And I myself not do it. I am the freaking queen of this. So literally I searched out, I've already scoped out everything. I'm already in it, just waiting to meet. Um, but like Raleigh bloggers, like in Florida, there was like a South Florida blogger group. Like, I'm not a blogger, but kind of. So I just invited myself to their meetings casually. 
and um, just started networking with people and like hearing their stories and just making myself like really get out of my comfort zone. There were so many people there that I genuinely wanted to be friends with. So I just walked up and just started talking to them, um, joining mop groups, um, moms of preschoolers, um, getting involved in church, joining gym. I'm a huge gym person. I have two gyms. I'm like, literally I could cry thinking about how much I want to go work out and meet all these people here. So just finding these people. But my key is like, I get, if, say I'm going to the gym, right? I will go like 20 minutes early and just talk to people. Like just talk to people. I put my oils on. People be like, you smell so good. I'll be like, oh my gosh, thank you. Uh, it's oil called Sacred Mountain. How was your day today? And just trying to like get to talk to them, get to know them. I never really lead with oils, but I try to get them on my social media. So like if they're like cool, I'll be like, are you on the gram? That is an extremely predatory way to go about this. Uh, I mean, having friendships only for your MLM business is especially disgusting. And I see that a lot. I see that a lot in multiple marketing companies. They try to make friends and be really friendly. And it's mainly just to try to get people into their multi-level marketing company. What? How about you just try to make friends because you want friends, not because you want them to join your pyramid scheme. In my opinion, I think it's a pyramid scheme, especially Young Living and a cult. But... She goes on to talk more about it and we'll hear more about it, but wow. Because I'd love to follow you on the gram. And then I know that if I get them on the gram, they're gonna be like, this girl is super weird, but I'm so intrigued. And then they'll, they'll start asking about oils. I do this all the time. So finding people, getting them on my social media channels, and then just kind of, I feel like, I don't know, and that's how we all should be posting, but if we're posting right, they're gonna see that we're all a product of the product and that this is like a normal part of our thing, like our life. And then they'll ask questions and they'll come to your parties. Um, so yeah, just trying to get out of my comfort zone. So like mops, um, funny story. First off, mops is a whole other thing we need to talk about. But what? What if they don't want to hear about your oils or come to your oil parties? Are you still going to be friends with them? Probably not. Sorry, my hair keeps getting my face. Probably not. You probably won't care about them. You care about those people who want to hear more about your oils. Wow. Talk about shallow. And Mops, mother of preschoolers is what it is. I used to do stuff for Mops. They can be quite vulnerable people. Mothers of preschoolers have a lot to deal with already because they have preschoolers. That's a vulnerable group of people that I see being sought after a lot, as well as new mothers, stay-at-home mothers, mothers in general. It's so gross. I just wish people, I just wish you would stop like preying on people and like find a new hobby. Like go paint. Like start painting or cross stitching or something. Read a book. Don't make your hobby preying on people for your multi-level marketing company. It, it's just unhealthy and gross. Stop it. Find a new hobby. I don't care what it is. Just stop preying on people for your multi-level marketing company. Stop saying your spicy water cure stuff, you nasty. Quit. I literally showed up. I remember I was the new girl. I had hot pink fuchsia hair. Like, I don't even know if I would talk to me if I went. And I remember pulling up in the parking lot and I literally was like, Jesus, please just let me not be super bold today. Like, just kind of play it cool. So I walked in and they're all like so intrigued by me because I was like the new person. They've been friends for like 30 million years. And they're like, Frankie, like, what do you do? And I literally just, the floodgates just opened and I'm like, yeah, I like run a multi-million dollar business from like my house and I have two kids and like, I'm going to Spain next week because Young Living is sending me for free and like all these things. And I remember going home that day and go, I cried to my husband, Lucas. I was like, I'm never going to be invited to church again. Like, they're going to hate me. They're like talking about me right now. I can't believe I said I run a multi-million, like how humble, such a Kanye moment. And then I checked my phone. I was so scared to check my phone all day. And literally the girl that sat next to me was like, Frankie, like, I need to know you and I need to know more. Can we meet for coffee next week? She's a silver on our team now. This is a year ago. The girl that sat next to her is um, somebody that just qualified for, she went on the Hawaii trip. She was top 100. She was number 67 in the whole company. 
Um, she's a preacher's wife. <laughs> her husband is a preacher at that church, which is great. All of those girls, the rest of them bought kits. Some of them are executives. Some of them don't do the business, but they order every month. And so I think it's just a good testimony to be like, listen, again, you cannot bless somebody. I don't know if I would necessarily go full Kanye at every moment, but it kind of paid off. And I had Yeah, your income claims paid off, didn't they? What? What about those that didn't buy oils from you? What about those that thought you were kind of crazy for coming in saying stuff like that? What about those that just wanted to be your friend because they wanted to be your friend and didn't want to buy anything from you and didn't want to be in your pyramid scheme? Yeah, I bet you're not friends with them. <sighs> she reminds me of, like, a mean girl who shadows as a nice girl but is actually just a mean girl. I feel like I'm in high school again, and I freaking hated high school. Why am I back in high school? Uh, I hated high school. I hated high school so much. Always need alcohol after watching this stuff, but it's like noon on a Thursday. <laughs> it's fine. I will deal with that later. I just, it's weird. It is weird that she did that and it is not okay and you should never go full Kanye about your multi-level marketing company. Now I don't have a problem going full Kanye but about your multi-level marketing company? No. And I had to say it for a reason. I don't know who I was that day. I remember specifically my hair was like on the side of my head and I was like in leggings and this shirt and I didn't sleep and I was like listen if, if they see that I can run a successful business looking like this maybe they'll want to do it too. So that was fun. So yeah, just basically meeting people, um, joining groups, you know, getting out. I literally, I have two neighbors that obviously I don't really know, but they're both, one of them had their baby yesterday and I brought over a pack of seedlings wipes and diapers and left it on their doorstep with like a note. Um, just trying to like get myself out there, but not in a weird way. Um, just blessing people with what I have basically. I hope that answers that somewhat. That's really good. I think, yes, thank you. Yeah, I think we forget that um, this business isn't comfortable, right? Like sometimes yeah. we get into a groove or doing things a certain way and then we're like, why am I not growing? Why am I not moving forward? And it's like, ooh, when's the last time I actually put myself in a situation where I didn't feel comfortable and not uncomfortable because it was a bad situation, but uncomfortable because I'm pushing myself outside of what I feel like is possible for me. Um, so I know, I mean, that, that speaks to me a lot because I am, I am an extroverted introvert. So the idea of like going into a room and talking to people like that literally makes my armpits sweaty but I can, I can do it. I, I know I can do it. And everyone else would probably perceive it as fine. But like the idea of it, I'm like, oh gosh, but I'm like, I know because I feel that way. Those are the kinds of things that I need to be putting into practice more. So that's really good. I'm an extroverted introvert too. And people think I'm super extroverted because of my personality, because I'm a blue, but I'll do that. I'll go to the gym and I'll talk to everybody and then I'll come home and shut my phone off. And I won't like, I, you all need to leave me alone for like the rest of the night and then tomorrow I'm good. It's so weird. And that's just always been my personality. Um, but I do, I really do shut down and that's something that I'm glad that you said. Um, I love transparency for sure. I'm like the worst after all these things, but, but it's so fun. This is such a fun business. I'm so grateful for all the relationships and I'm glad, you know, for all the people that don't think I'm insane and not joined with us. So does anybody else have any questions? I am driving, so it might be weird. Um, I wanted to go back to your group thing that you're doing for Silverbound. How did you guys choose um, who got grouped with who? And did you like rally leaders to like help manage the groups? Are you doing like messenger threads? I guess we can talk about this on another thing, but I thought I would just ask. Yeah. Um, so so basically, it started out as me. I have a group of like really tight friends that are all gold leaders in Young Living with on our team. And um, we decided to do this. We decided to just run with it. We kept it. We didn't even tell anybody else we were doing it. 
We didn't open it up team wide or anything. We didn't know how it was going to go. I feel like sometimes these group things work really well or they don't. And I didn't want it to be this like huge thing and then it fail and then, you know, whatever. So we made it really exclusive and tight lipped. And so each of those five gold leaders and myself each picked five people. And we picked people based on, are they positive? Are they showing up? I don't like to waste my time. And I think that maybe I'm a little red in that sense. Like I just, you're either in or you're not, and it's fine if you're not, but if you're in, I'm all in with you. And so they had to, we had to just have that gut feeling about them. And so what we did is we voice messaged each of those five people. So I was in charge of five people and I was like, Hey girl, you're killing it. I have this really exclusive opportunity for you. I'd love to coach you one-on-one -on -one with five other really amazing leaders. Um, all I ask that you show up literally for 30 days every day with me. Um, I'm doing, and I think it's important for you guys to know that like, this is like my, my leadership style. I will not tell them to do something if I'm not doing it. So literally all the tasks they're doing it. I don't care if I've done it 5,000 times, I'm going to do it too, because I feel like to get to diamond and to world crown diamond, it's the same things. Like we overcomplicate this business so much. It's literally showing up. It's sharing the kit. It's teaching people about the business opportunity and essential rewards. And you keep having you. And I feel like some people just stop there and it's like, no, no, you have to keep enrolling. I've enrolled every single month for almost six years. And I'm again, nobody special. Like I just open my mouth and I go meet people and I find those opportunities. Um, and so for me, I was like, listen, I'm going to run with you. Like, you're not alone in this. Like, I'm going to hold your hand. I'm going to get really uncomfortable too. And so we found those five people each. So it was like a group of like 35 people. So that's what we capped it at. We had the, the weekly calls. And honestly, those people that started at star, I think we had, gosh, at least like 14 people hit executive last month, which is crazy. Um, so it proves that it works. That's so awesome. Yeah, it, it was like mind blowing and like so many tears. And then I was like, okay, this is great. And my leaders started asking questions on my silver leaders. And so I was like, listen, whoever wants to do this, get on a, a Zoom call with me. And so I found the people, because my team's really diverse. Like we have a lot of really strong reds that do things their own way. And then there's some people that want to run with me and like, there's no wrong way to do it. I just let people do whatever they want, excuse me, do whatever they want at this point. Um, and so the people that wanted to do it with me got on a Zoom call. There's actually so many people that wanted to do it that I created two groups. So it's been a little chaotic this month, um, but it's working. I'm going to make it work. It's fine. So we split, every, there was like 10 leaders, including me. So there's me and four other leaders in these two groups. And again, we each invited five people and we're just doing it again. Like it was the same thing I wrote out last month. I just made the graphics a little cuter and more polished and, uh, they all picked five people. So my only thing with that is I want them to be star or senior star. Cause I feel like the things that we're doing, like executives should already be doing all of this and already kind of know this. So I wanted to keep it very tight knit. I don't know. They're really, that's like the only thing. I just want people that are positive and are going to do it. Basically. By positive and that are going to do it, she means toxic positivity and that aren't going to question her or question Young Living, or question the business at all. It's a cult. 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 I know. I have a beautiful voice. It's quite lovely. That's awesome. One, one thing, I just want to say, one thing that I love about you, Frankie, is that you are someone who obviously you're you're really good at at instagram like you're really good at social media i don't even know i feel like an old lady i'm like i'm terming it like it's like a verb you're good at social media -ing. um but i think you're just also such a testimony of someone who like just does all the things like you're not someone who's like well i did that post and no one responded so i guess this business isn't for me or the opposite of you know, I did this event and no one showed up. So I guess this isn't for me. It's like, just do all the things, yeah. try all the things and pivot when you need to pivot. Like you said, it's like weird times right now. Um, I know I have some people on my team that are like all about in person and we've been forced to like pivot. Um, so I think you're just such a testimony of like, you know what, if that way is not working, try something else or do all the things and then maybe all the things will work. Um, and, and I, and I think there's definitely something to be said about finding our own niches in the business. 
but also just being open to pivoting and being flexible. And um, I just like really appreciate that about you because it's, you know, I think it's, I think especially um, because you have such a following on social media, I know that there are people that probably look at you and think, well, she just gets all these kit sales because she's so good at social media. But the reality is you're also focusing so much energy and time on seeing people face to face and putting in that energy and time, um, you know, into connecting with them like outside of social media. And I think that's a really, really important and valuable piece. But she really does have a semi-large social media and a huge team. And one, she really doesn't have to do that much work if she doesn't want to. Two, she probably gets a lot of it from her social media, a lot of orders from her social media. Uh, so yeah, I mean, if you have a large social media, you're likely going to be decently successful at a multi-level marketing company because you already have the following. You already have people who are watching you and wanting to do what you do. But I will bet that a lot of people who follow her are young living people. I bet that's where her, I bet that's where her growth came from. But at this point, she really didn't have to do a whole lot if she didn't want to. She probably doesn't have to enroll a bunch of people. I mean, you know. Her goal is to just make sure her downline doesn't quit. It's kind of her goal at this point. And that saying that, like, again, we all know that this business is not cookie cutter and there's not a one size fits all, but I just think you're such a, a testimony to just doing it all and figuring out what works and um, adapting. So. Yeah, no, I really appreciate that. that. That's like my goal. Like, I just don't ever want anybody First of all, I had no social media following like five years ago when I started um, at all. This is weird. But also, um, that's something I really do pride myself on. I will always try all the things and do all the things because I want my team to see me doing that. So for you to say that about me, that just means the world to me. So thank you so much. Work my ass off. <laughs> I really do. Right. Really yeah. People don't realize. They look at diamonds and they're like, oh, they hit the top. They're good. Um, but it's really not, there's a lot that goes into it. I mean, as you know. Yeah. yeah. Well, and, and I think you also just show a good balance of like, I, I bet there's a lot that goes into it when it comes to making sure everyone doesn't quit. <laughs> like I said before, I mean, her job at this point isn't to enroll a bunch of new people or grow her team personally. Her job is to make sure that the people in her downline do not quit. Make sure that they continue make sure that they continue to get people so that she can continue to get money. I mean, that's, it's as simple as that. That's all she has to do is make sure her downline doesn't quit. That's it. That's all she said because she's in a pyramid scheme. I should uh, write a song about it. I should write a song about it. <sighs> Anyone want to help me? Comment below. Yeah, I probably won't be singing it though. <laughs> I'm not great. I basically sound like an obsessive Instagram <laughs> fan right now, but I, I do just, I really do love following you because you just show such a good, like, uh, balance of like life and work because, you know, I've also heard young living leaders who have said like, you know, don't watch any TV, you're wasting your time. And then it's like, you're sitting in this guilt, like, all I want to do is is relax and watch this show, but I shouldn't because I should be working. And I just, I love when I see people that are like still living their life. Yeah. Like you can have this business and be incredibly successful, but also have time for family and time for yourself. Like when you show your workouts, I'm like, I am so motivated. Frankie's been up for like three hours and I just rolled out of bed. Like I need to get my butt in gear. And, um, and I just, I love that you'll show like when you do your bachelorette and bachelor parties and it's like, yeah, because this is a way that you are connecting with your community. And yeah. then like as a byproduct, they see that you are a part of this young living world, that that's your lifestyle and that's how you invite people in. So you're just so good at that. So yeah, bachelor. She can do all of that because she is at the top. She has 
the freedom because she's the 0.1%. She doesn't have to do anything. She can do whatever she wants. But 99% can't. 99% can't. They can't do that. You don't get to sit around and do whatever you want if you want to get to the top of the company. You have to work constantly, constantly, constantly. The only reason she can do all that she said is because she's at the top and she has been for three years at least. She makes it look beautiful and wonderful and relaxing and like a dream when in reality she probably grinded her ass off to get to the top and literally scammed so hard, felt a lot of bitterness, a lot of anger. I mean, who knows? I know a little bit, but she, she had to do a shit ton of scamming to get to the top, and she did. In Paradise and Bachelor beauty parties are for sure a great business tool. I'm not kidding. That's how I meet people. I've totally forgot about that. I just forgot I could have people over. Mm -hmm. 100% recommend. Yeah, no, there's, you know, people will always say you have to sacrifice and you for sure do. But I also am such a big person that like, what are you working for? Like we're all working for freedom and like, we need to enjoy that freedom. And like, I literally have been at the market all the morning with my, my kid and my husband just getting like fresh flowers and produce. And then I came home and I'm like, okay, you guys need to go to the Starbucks drive through Like I got to work now. So I think, you know, there's no such thing as balance, but I think you can find ways um, in healthy ways to balance that out. I could do a whole call on that whole thing, but, um, but yeah. Um, and maybe I'll just leave you guys with this, like the last thing, maybe like my best business tip for you guys as like a person is every morning before I get out of bed, um, I write down like non-negotiables. So like for sure, like Kelly said, I ha if I don't work out, my family kicks me out of the house because they're like, you need to go run because I'm like, I'm the worst. So like morning every day for sure is like my thing. So find like an outlet that makes you happy. Maybe that's like crystal painting, which I just discovered and it's so fun or doing a puzzle or something that brings you joy and you put your, my kid is screaming in the background, so sorry. And you put your phone on airplane mode for like 30 minutes, you know? Um, but also every day I write down like no more than five things, three to five business things that I literally need to knock out every single day that ensures that I'm showing up as a leader every day, but also like I'm getting my happy mail out. I'm doing that post that I need to do. I'm making that graphic or making those rollers, whatever it is. And I literally will withhold something. So it's so funny you said this. I will withhold Vanderpump rules. One of my favorite guilty pleasures ever. Um, I'll be like, Frankie, that new Vanderpump came out. You better get your five things done. And that literally motivates me. Like I have to withhold things. It used to be coffee. And then I realized that that is not, not good. Not a good thing for any of us. So then I started letting myself have coffee in the morning, but withholding like my favorite TV show or a movie or something that I really want to do. Um, and that's how I knock it out. And I always teach my team to do that. I'm like, write five things down. Don't overwhelm yourself. Just five things. You can knock it out in 30 minutes a day. Um, but yeah, that's so true. Watch TV. Be normal. <laughs> I like that. Be normal. Um, awesome. Well, thank you so much for spending. Yeah. Why would you withhold coffee from yourself? Crazy sauce. I did not allow myself to drink coffee and enjoy it for two years when I was in Arbonne because they talked about the fist sticks and they shamed you for drinking coffee in my experience. And now I love coffee. I just finished my <laughs> iced coffee. I drink it every day. Every day. That one, this one's long. This one's a long one. I know. And I just thought it was important to see and hear what the people who are in the company see in here. Not what they think other people will see in here who are not in the company, but what they feel like is safe to say in here, which are a lot of income claims, a lot of product claims, just completely disgusting things. Obviously, the business is the most important thing. They don't really care about the products. They'll claim that they care stuff, great, 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 but they want people in the business. They know that that is how they make money. And they really focus on indoctrination and groupism. And then they drop you, like a, like a bad habit, dropped. Because they don't care about you. They do not care. If you are not working, if you are not successful, successful, you are done. If you are not holding up toxic positivity standards, or if you are questioning anything, done, dropped. 
Wow, that's a good mentor, right? Disgusting. Uh, reminds me of a cult. Please comment below your thoughts. What did you think of this video? What was something that stuck out to you? I want to hear your thoughts. I love when other people comment their thoughts because I get to see things that I missed too in the video. Thanks so much for being here and listening to this video and please put your own commentary below. We love to hear it and see it. Subscribe, like, hit the button that alerts you when I post a video. I am so excited for what's to come. We've only been doing this for a month on this channel and we're over 1300 subscribers almost at 4,000 watch hours. It blows my mind and I'm so glad that you're a part of this. Truly, I am. If you have questions, horror stories, top fails, shoot me an email. It's in the description. Check out other people that I like in the anti-MLM community in the description. And go check out my other videos. I have one that's almost at, that's over 9,000 views, I'm pretty sure. And it's a pretty damn good one, I must say. I am pretty proud of that one. And I appreciate anyone who sends me anything about anti-MLM content. It's very helpful, like this video. Thanks again for watching. You're the realist. Don't use spicy water to cure anything ever. Have a fantastic morning, afternoon, evening, night, whatever time it is when you watch this. And I'll see you next time.